what we're going to talk about today is Trisana. Now, I've done a few webinars kind of talking about how nice the properties are uh, of Trisana. Um, but then we got a lot of questions like, oh, okay, that's all great, but what should we or what could we make out of this material? And so I, I am going to start the presentation for people who don't know or haven't seen um, some of the stats on the uh, quality of this material, um, just so we have a foundation for those who haven't seen that. And for everyone else, this will be a bit of a review for a few minutes at the start. But then we're going to move into how my lab is using Trusana um, in, in the day-to-day -day workflows. Um, there's a couple of different options that I'll show you where uh, you know this can be something that's used just about every day on a lot of different appliances uh, in your lab. It's you know, you'll see what I mean by this, but I, I feel like you could actually become your own tooth manufacturer uh, with this material. And I think that's kind of the way things might go. And I mean, you know, Meyerson is a, a hundred plus year old company and how they started for most of that time was as a tooth manufacturer and they're still a tooth manufacturer, but they know the writing on the wall. They understand that uh, I think this is gonna happen. And what I mean by this is, labs are going to become tooth manufacturers and a lot of the the teeth that you buy in cards you might not have to might not have to keep stocks um, you can make them as you go so we'll talk about what i mean by that as we go along so again i'm going to start out with just talking about some of the um you know the good qualities of this material why you would consider this material for replacing your denture teeth so um you know the one thing that we all want in a 3d printable material i think right i don't want to speak for you guys but maybe hopefully i'm right with this but we want as good if not better right what we've been doing for years as far as making dentures they last pretty darn good i mean you probably do like i do repairs on relines on dentures that look like they're 20 years old right so we know that the base is strong enough and it lasts and the teeth seem to be you know good quality tooth is pretty wear resistant and lasts so we would love to be able to 3d make those right 3d digitally design and 3d print our dentures and all i think i want is as good if not better than what i can do traditionally and I think a lot of the materials that have come along so far are not that. They're not as good, not as good looking and not as good physical properties. Now, Trisan is a different, a different animal. Um, this is a material that I believe is as good in a lot of instances better. This is what example, right? So a lot of the current 3D printing options that are available um, absorb about 2% moisture. Denture teeth, right? The things that we've been using for, you know, a hundred years or more, um, absorb 0.4, some of the good quality denture teeth, right? So that's pretty low. And that's why you don't see much staining with them, at least absorption. You see it on the surface, but that's it. Trisana is actually less than that by a little bit, 0.35, right? So as good, if not better, a little bit better. So what we find, right, so toughness, right? And I want to kind of explain toughness, right? So here it's three times stronger when wet. It's an interesting point, and we'll talk about that in a second, but Trisana actually thrives as far as its toughness in a moist, high moisture environment. Right? Other resins you'll see um, do not. They actually uh, don't do, they actually start to deplete in strength when they get into a high moisture environment. So. You can see here three times stronger than the leading high, uh, high impact resin. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, this is a tooth resin, right? And when we're talking about toughness, we're talking about what would be a good quality for a denture tooth. Wear resistance is the biggie. Um, deformation resistance, right? So, um, you know, you want to have a nice, hard, but not uh, chipping uh surface that won't wear over a period of time and that's what we mean by toughness now um, our trisana base which we do have in the works it's in the fda and is not available yet i will repeat our denture base for trisana is in fda approval and is not available yet uh, but that will be the same chemistry but a different um formulation if you will it will be uh 
the, it won't have that wear resistance because the denture base doesn't need that. It'll have more of an impact resistance. But again, that's something that, again, we don't know when it could be released because it's at FDA. You just kind of, we have some guesses, but we just don't know. But you can look for that in the future, which is exciting. So here uh, is Trisana compared to some leading 3D printed high impact resins, right? So uh, our <clears throat> flexural strength is well above them, nearly twice as strong, right? But you'll see that over a period of time spent in a high moisture environment, Trusana does um, drop a little bit in its strength, but really not a negligible amount at all. Whereas others already starting much lower drop almost in half uh, in its strength. So that's important because you know, people can give you testing in a laboratory sitting there on a bench, but until it gets into the space that it's actually going to be working in, um, you know, that is the telltale sign. And that's really where it's strength to be tested. And Trisana, we've done that. And it actually shows to really uh, thrive in that environment. All right. Uh, we did testing. Um, you can kind of see down here. Um, it's over 30,000 cycles. Uh, we the, the company that did this, uh, the company has nothing to do with Meyerson. Uh, this is a totally, uh, you know, uh, we hired them to do this. So they have no reason to, to have a good result. They just want to give us the result of the testing. And they did it up against a uh, uh, zirconia uh, opposing and did the wear test. And it showed to have double the wear of the leading brand of tooth that it was tested next to. So, one thing that that company said, and that's what they do is do a lot of this testing. They said it was the best wearing plastic that they had ever tested. So that's impressive to me. Um, that was really nice to see. And I will tell you in working with this material in your hands, grinding on it with carbides, grinding on it with rubber wheels, you see it and you see why. Um, to adjust this material, I really find I use a fine, real fine cross-cut carbide or just a rubber wheel. And it really feels and reacts like a composite um, that you would grind on. So uh, yeah, really has great characteristics as far as everything that you need for a, a denture tooth. We're going to talk about the Trisana Arch today and a couple other ways that you could use or applications for this material. Right now we're doing some studies with some um, universities. And uh, it's an interesting study. What we're going to do is have a patient that's going to receive an all on X case, all in four, all in five, whatever it is, um, traditional acrylic denture teeth. They're going to have that placed. Once the doctor places it, adjusts any occlusion, gets it exactly how it's going to be, they then scan that in. Uh, they're going to scan every surface of that appliance, that all on whatever appliance that they create. And then they send the models and the scans to me and some other labs that are working on this, um, this uh, test. And <clears throat> they, uh, we then duplicate that exact appliance. Matter of fact, we, you'll see an example of one in a little bit. We don't even build it with Gradia or anything as far as the pink. We print it monolithic out of the Trusana and we actually just paint uh, OptiGlaze pink on there. So it's not the prettiest tissue, um, but we didn't want to change any thicknesses anywhere in any way uh, within microns as compared to that original appliance. Because then what the doctor's going to do after a certain period of time, he's going to remove that acrylic and denture tooth one, observe any cracks, chipping, tooth popping. Also, and then place the Trisana in there, let it go through that process. They will then uh, 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 let it go for the exact same period of time. They'll actually scan both in and compare the wear that they all go through as well as visible deterioration comparisons. And so far, so really good. We're seeing really good results with this as a Trisana Arch all on X type appliance. Um, Meyerson also has a really good team of, of doctors and scientists and PhDs to support this material. You know, I've been involved, I have a few patents in my name. Uh, I've been involved in development of a lot of materials and this one has been <clears throat> just the next level. You know, the amount of just specialists involved with this 
whenever Meyerson validates a material, um, it's like no other, and I'm learning that. And I didn't really understand what validating a 3D printed material means, but I have learned that. And there's there's different levels of validating material. And what Myers is doing is validating every part of, 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 of that process of 3D printing all the way down to the curing process. And we'll kind of talk about that. Uh, but Dr. Stansberry, Dr. Sadowski, uh, Dr. Sadowski is the one we're working through um, a lot of the schools to to develop the uh, the tests. Dr. Stansberry is uh, uh, the the man behind the material, and then we have Do uh, Mr. Dr. Ava Cabbage and uh, Stephanie. I was called Dr. Stephanie, but she, um, the, especially uh, Stephanie, a very reachable person. So she's the um, the one that when we when we have any issues, uh, lab has problems printing or see something with the material. Right, we have, you know, a a a specialist in the field of three D printing to to fall on and ask questions about. So for me, you know, as a lab guy, I'm going to be you know a, a more of of the questions on design or or things like that. But when it really comes down to it. Uh, you know, the actual science and chemistry of the material and figure out what's going on. Great people to fall back on and rely on. All right. So, um, Tresana, let's, you know, kind of get into it. So the one thing I will say about Tresana is you want to make sure that the material is mixed. Now, there is no uh, secondary uh, material put in there to give it the wear resistance. The chemistry of the material alone gives it all its strength and all of its great properties. The only reason you do need to mix the material is because there's a pigment in there and we're doing denture teeth. And those denture teeth, as we all know, need to be accurate to the shape. And those pigments can settle, right, out of the, the, the liquid. You know, if you're printing each day, you know, no problem, right? The, that material is getting agitated constantly, never really has a chance to settle. If it sits for a week or two, yeah, give it a real aggressive shake for, for you know, a good period of time. And then something as simple as this I have in my lab. <laughs> um, it's just a hot dog roller from 7-Eleven, <laughs> like you'd see in 7-Eleven, not from 7-Eleven, but you can buy these on Amazon, you know, 100 and 150 bucks or something like that. And this, this one here can hold four bottles, one, two, three, four, kind of, you know, uh, two here, two here. And also one thing that's real cool for the labs that might be on here that live up north, um, it actually has the warmer, right? And you can turn that warmer so it just kicks on. So it's putting up a little heat, maybe 80 degrees, 90 degrees. And so when you get in that lab in the morning and it's cold, uh, you can actually warm up your resin with it as well. We'll be careful with that. Don't overwarm it, but uh, just to get a little heat going. And this one's nice. It just slowly rolls it. So it's nice to have that just sitting there to constantly um, rolling that bottle to keep that uh, uh, pigmentation suspended in that resin. Uh, the printers, uh, Sega is validated. Spurt Ray is validated. Um, uh, you know, some of the, the top uh, printers that are available out there. And we're working on more that are in the pipeline to be validated. So look for that to come in the not so distant future. And, you know, for anybody out there that maybe is milling dentures and is thinking about, you know, uh, printing, I mean, the big thing to consider is this, depending on the mill you have, would take anywhere from, you know, an hour and 20 minutes to, I mean, some mills can really, grind these fast, but generally a lot of the most pop, more popular mills, you're looking at an hour or 20 minutes for like a VHF or something to maybe three hours and some, you know, slower mills, um, you know, and this is what you could produce on a build plate, a larger build plate in, you know, three hours or, or thereabouts. So that's the real debate uh, and the, the decision to have with where you're going in your lab is, um, you know, what what makes sense you know milling denture bases again as good if not better those denture bases are as good if not better than what we can inject or pack so that's a really good choice for that it just it's, it's got some wear and tear in the mill and it's got some you know it's got some uh time that it takes 3d printing is the way this is actually 
the demo or the, you know, I got a little bit of the, the Trisana uh, base. It's not FDA approved. I'll repeat again, not FDA approved yet. It's not available yet, but look for the future. But uh, really beautiful material, nice and translucent. I'm going to be really excited once it's uh, available. And teeth as well. And this is what I'm talking about as far as the tooth manufacturer. This is really nice because teeth, um, you know, any uh, for people who don't know about 3D printing, the taller what your printing is, you know, so you're looking here at probably three and a half to maybe even four and a half hours to print this, right? Uh, this material here, because the teeth, because they're shorter, is probably about an hour and a half, maybe maybe two hours, but probably an hour and a half. So, you know, print teeth, it's not going to eat up a lot of your print printer space or printer time. So becoming your own uh, tooth manufacturer is not going to uh, take a lot of space up in your printer as far as time is concerned. Your washing units, uh, a lot of those printers come with a washing unit. There is a really cool uh, inexpensive washing unit that you get on, get on Amazon. It's like a hobby thing, but it's pretty simple. It has a little tub in there, has a little spinner that you fill it with the alcohol and it just spins. So if anybody is kind of running out of space with their uh, uh, cleaning unit that came with your system. These are a nice little inexpensive. I think they're, I don't know, like 60 bucks or something like that, or hundred bucks, I don't know, on Amazon. So those are really nice for, for that. The curing, so just understand as uh, Meyerson validates, they're not only validating the printer, they're validating the cure uh, curing light with it. So between the sprint ray, the sprint ray is eight minutes, flip it eight minutes. But with the Asiga, it's 12 minutes, flip it 12 minutes. So that's different and you can affect the, the properties. You can even affect the shade of a material by over curing it. So um, just be careful uh, and follow the validation that's been proven. And the cool thing about this material as well is when it's cured, right? So you clean it, cure it. It actually goes into a water bath at 80 degrees. Now this is 80 degrees Celsius. That's the C, Celsius. That's like 172 degrees Fahrenheit. And it goes through a water bath uh, as part of the curing process for 10 minutes. So really a, uh, a different kind of material than you're used to using. And part of the reason why it comes out uh, to have those excellent properties. One thing I will tell everyone, if you're already using Trisana, uh, Alcohol is a harsh material on any 3D, 3D printed material. You want to have the Trusana in the alcohol for as short a period of time as possible, right? Because there's pores in the material. It's only 80%, so it's maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, 80% cured when it comes out of your machine. The, the light cure finishes that, right? So at 80%, it does, it can absorb moisture that it has more pores, if you will, open to allow for that alcohol to get inside. And if that alcohol gets inside, it can deteriorate that material and weaken it. So nice thing about Trisana is it is a very fluid resin. So it does clean very easily. So I am spending about 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, 30 seconds in the dirty wash of alcohol, and then I'll blow it with compressed air to force any resin that might be puddling in some some areas like that. And then I move it over to my clean. And a lot of times I like to spend maybe 10 to 20 seconds in the clean side under the agitation. And then come out again, I blow it. Now the outside of our, our printed materials are, are have the striations in them. And when you blow it, the alcohol will evaporate almost immediately. If there's any residual resin, it'll kind of wick over the surface. You'll see it wetting over the surface. And if you see that, put it back in the clean or spray it with a little bottle. You don't want to see any wicking, but you just don't want it to spend much time in the alcohol. We've seen as much as it as 15% deterioration in strength if you leave it in the alcohol too long. So depending on what wash unit you use and how you're cleaning it, uh, please be very careful with uh, how you, you clean this material. All right, so now we're gonna get into how you could use this in your lab. Um, we're gonna talk about the Trisana Complete Arch, screw retained type appliance. We're gonna talk about digital dentures. We're gonna talk about just production of teeth as far as you know, parcels concerned. You can see here in this video, this is a Duraflex milled base. Interest on a teeth. 
and those just fit right in place. And so I basically manufactured my own teeth. You can see the posts that are in there for, for retention, right? Because it still only adheres mechanically like Duraflex would traditionally. Um, and they fit nice and perfectly. And you would use either a composite or an acrylic to mechanically lock them in place. All right, so we're gonna start out with the Trisana Arch, right? And so this is a, a monolithic, all printed in Trisana <coughs> tooth color, all right? Um, you can see the supports, um, that it fits perfectly. Uh, it really is amazing how well they fit. Now, there's two ways you could go about this. If this is something fairly temporary, or like we talked about in the testing with the universities where I don't wanna change anything, you can use the OptiGlaze pink. Now it's not ideal because um, you're just painting a coat of pink and you have to kind of, you have to do like three or four coats before you really get a pink to kind of start to show. But it does pretty well for a temporary type of an option. Um, and most patients don't show in the lowers that uh, pink area, you know, the tissue area. But you can see here matching the shade is the material. As long as you keep it mixed, it does really, really a nice job. So that's one way of going about it. The second way would be to go ahead and build up your base with Gradia, right? And so if you guys haven't used Gradia, it has a lot of choices of a, a pink base and it looks very nice. And it's, it's like a composite. It's kind of like a putty, um, the way that it forms and goes into place. And you just build up that area, right? In the pink, you would cut it back, right? So that base would be cut back. So you make room for the tissue to be built up and you create that. And you can kind of see here uh, how nice the Trisana shows light through just naturally. You know, that's another nice thing about Trisana is you don't have to have uh, fillers, right? To be strong. And with a lot of other materials that you may see, you will have uh, fillers in there that give, give it some of its strength, but what those fillers kind of gives it a lot of opaciousness and just it really doesn't look good. Trisana can be, you know, crystal clear uh, with the chemistry it is, it still have the same uh, properties. And so if you have an acrylic, let's say you're milling your bases and you like the idea of milling, um, you know, Trisana base isn't available yet. So what, how can I, you know, have a denture made with Trisana teeth in a base? Well, acrylic is fine, right? Trisana is nice because it bonds with, with acrylics. Uh, and a lot of composites. We're using some primers that come with those composites. So you could mill a base, right? In your uh, uh, mill, you just mill that base, that's acrylic. And then you can bond either with acrylic or some co uh, composites, those teeth right into place. And then uh, my process is just to use a nice big round burr to clean up any excess that I missed before I cured it. Step down to another small burr. I will usually separate with a diamond disc at this point. I usually won't separate before I bond. It'd be nice if you could, because you could really get down and you won't hit the papillas and stuff. But the, the bonding agent that you use winds up flowing up in there and it's just hard to manage. So I leave it kind of full in the interproximal and then I go back in and separate it and then come in with this little itty bitty round to just kind of form those papillas and clean up anything. And then you can polish it um, or OptiGlaze it. Uh, the OptiGlaze is nice. Um, the OptiGlaze, uh, you know, the Trisana is so translucent that it really gives you when you paint something on the surface, it really doesn't look like it's on the surface. It's a lot like Emacs to me that way, because Emacs is a real low value. And when you put a shade on the surface, because the light is able to pass through, uh, it really does, uh, doesn't look like it's something just put on the surface. It looks like something that is internal and throughout. And I'll show you an example, a really good example, uh, in a little bit of, of, of that. Uh, so, so that's the Trisana Arch, you know, and all on, you have a couple options there, um, whether it's kind of a, a real temporary and aesthetics aren't a big concern, you could do the OptiGlaze base. If you're doing something that, you know, it's gonna be in longer and there is a concern for, uh, you know, aesthetics, the Gradia is really a beautiful choice. And you could polish it with the Gradia. The Gradia polishes up pretty nice with the Trusana or go ahead and give it a coating of OptiGlaze to, to give it a glaze on the surface. The uh, uh, other way that you could use the material and it's kind of more on the tip of being the uh, tooth manufacturer 
is literally just that. So you're going to create your, your own teeth. And so kind of a workflow for that or a, uh, setting up is just to do Pontics, whether you're an Exacad or three shape, just set up so you have a full arch of upper and lower Pontics. And then what I'll do is I'll scan in my upper and lower arch with the bite blocks as my bite or my vestibular scan. But then when I scan in my models, I'm going to cut the wax off my base plate and leave my base plates on the model. All right. And then those models will be meshed in to, to my opening uh, that my bite box created, but I have my base plates still in place. So then when I create my setup, and that setup goes down and makes contact with that base plate. So what I'm gonna do then is go and print my teeth. And when I print my teeth, they'll go back, you know, they come out of the printer, get cured. Then they'll sit on those base plates on the articulator perfectly, right? Up against my base plate. So I know exactly where they go. Every once in a while, I have to do a little adjustment. Or maybe the support pins are there or something goes on. But other than that, it just drops right in place. And I'll put a few dabs of wax here, here, and here, just something to lock it into place. And then it goes to my Festooner and he'll build up the wax. And this is a way that you can, you know, kind of get into the digital side, not have to buy cards of teeth, um, you know, just print them yourself. And but not totally convert your doctors over to kind of doing a monolithic try in and kind of go into that part of it. This can be challenging, right? I mean, it's challenging and it's not challenging. I was just talking to one of my doctors today and he was saying, you know, he loves this because if he has a cant on a denture, right? If he puts a try in and realizes that he had a little bit of a cant involved in it, he's like, I just put it in a cup of hot water and then put it in the mouth and then just have the patient bite down a little bit and I just go dig into the wax and I just pull that side down into place and the whole thing kind of falls into place. The time where it can be a little bit of a struggle is if they're like, oh, you know, I want to take that one tooth and give it a little twist or do something like that because they're all locked, right? So they're all locked together because you get strength and all this stuff, but then they're all locked together and it's difficult to, to do finer details. Now, I don't have a lot of doctors that'll do that. They'll just kind of send it back and say, hey, give the laterals a twist or do something like that. And then you could do that. You could, you could either redesign it, reprint it. You could go in there and separate it with a real thin disc in that area and move that one individual tooth. There's some options there, but there's pros and cons, just like everything we do in our industry. There's pros and cons doing this way, but I just wanted to make it available to your, get your minds thinking about how you could use this material you know, in, in this industry. You can polish um, using pumice. Pumice and polish works really nice on this material. Uh, probably the best. Like I would say this polishing kit, which is the Meyerson's kit for polishing this material, um, it works good. Uh, but I would say I would like, if you're gonna polish this, take it into your pumice, pumice substitute, go over with your rag wheel. Right, it hit all those areas that you would normally hit on a denture with the rag. And I, you know, not trying to wipe everything out, just kind of hitting all those areas. Then I would either move to a, a B52 brush uh, with your pumice and finish things up so you keep the character and keep some of that uh, texture, or you can move over to this. Uh, this one's nice because it doesn't need any external abrasive. <coughs> Excuse me. It's uh, yellow, red, blue, green, the abrasives in those brushes. And so, when it goes to place, uh, well, when you go to pumice, you don't or go to polish, you don't have to add any abrasives. So you can do it at your desk or whatever. It doesn't put off a lot of, you know, like pumice would make a mess. And so it's kind of nice. And because it has all the bristles, it goes into the finer details and doesn't wash out any of the character that you've created with, with uh, you know, with the way you designed everything. So uh, that works out good. And then pump, any high shine that you use on your acrylics um, gives it a really brilliant, nice high shine. If you're going to opti glaze, um, I'm really loving opti glaze more and more, um, and I'm seeing really long-lasting results. Again, there's no studies that I've done; it's just more of having cases go out and have them come down back for relines and different things, and just seeing that hey, you know, this is looking like that I sent it out, you know, really good. But in the kits, you have just about any color that you would want to modify the base as well as the teeth. It even has, and you can't see it in this picture, but they actually have an A, B, and a C, which is literally if you were to process in like an A1, 
and the doctor says, hey, everything's great, process, but hey, by the way, could you change to say day three, right? We all, we all get that. It's like, yeah, that's easy, or, or it's we're literally starting the case over again. Um, but now what, what I'll do is, uh, you know, is I'll opti-glaze that thing right up to A3, and I'll be darned if the tooth doesn't look better than when it started. Um, really nice. But if you're going to opti-glaze the Trusana, you just need to dull the surface. So you could sandblast with aluminous oxide to dull that surface. You could um, pumice. Um, pumicing kind of makes it a little smooth to my liking. I haven't seen a problem. But I do like the yellow version of our polishing kit that goes on a mandrel. It can fit in a handpiece. Um, and I'll just go over the surface, right? Uh, and it gives it a nice kind of you know, when you look real close, a little bit of scratch on the surface, dulls that out and gets it prepped. And you can be a little precise with it. You know, if you wanted to polish your base and just optiglaze the teeth, um, you can pretty much polish it. And probably if you're pretty darn careful, keep it pretty well on the teeth as far as dulling it out and then be real precise in your painting of your optiglaze. And then once you build it up, you know, a little blue in the incisal, you know, I, I don't have a huge lab, you know, we're seven technicians. Um, and so as anyone that's my size or smaller or even a little bigger than that, you know that you have to wear a lot of hats. And so I spend probably, we're full service, I'll spend probably, you know, 30 to 35% of my day in the credit bridge department and 40, you know, five or there about percent of my day in the removal department. And so for many years, when I was younger, I did all the staining glazing and porcelain. And uh, that was nice because with the opti glaze, it, that really comes into play. You know, so any labs out there that are considering, you know, working with the OptiGlaze, grab one of your guys over in the Crown or Bridge department and, you know, they, they're they really going to pick up on using the OptiGlaze a lot faster than, you know, probably your denture uh, guy would because it's very similar to a lot of the staining glazing they're doing on Zirconia as far as the colors. They're going to love it because instead of building up the shade and putting it, firing it for 15, 20 minutes and then cooling down and and then doing it again, this one is literally painted on and hold it under a light or put it in your light box for you know, 20 seconds, bring it out, add a little more, 20 seconds, you know, and just get it to where you need it to be. So it's really fast and really nice and you really make a good, nice difference. And this is kind of what you could accomplish with it, right? You can really see a little blue in the incisal is really going to give you that, that uh, uh, translucency. You know, blue cancels out all colors. And so that's kind of why our teeth look blue in the incisal it's because light's passing through. You know, that's what we can accomplish with using a little blue in the incisal, a little color at the neck, little reds in our base, little whites uh, to pale out the necks of the, uh, the tissue so it's blanched. You can even do a little uh, occlusal anatomy if you want to go crazy. I, I went crazy, but I will say, you know, whenever you process, they have a high viscosity and a regular, just clear, um, polish or seal it for the surface. Um, I do like the, the more fluid one. And I do like to put it on sparingly. Like I like to see the ripples uh, of the teeth showing through, right? You can see all this. I, I like to have that. I don't like it to look like a marble. You know, it's the same thing in Credit Bridge. You know, you don't want it to look like you're super smooth, just uh, uh, you know, look like a marble, you know, glass. You want it to have some character and pick up light and, sh and shoot light back at the eye at different angles and stuff. And so I paint it on nice and thin, uh, just make sure it wets the surface. And I'll even go over the brush and this material, you'll paint it on. And if it sits for a second, it'll kind of get thick real quick. And it's kind of reacting with the surface. And once it gets a little thicker, you can really kind of spread it. And then talk about more of the staining glazing part or you know, staining part of it. But whatever it's the the glazing or the clear coat, uh, painting it on and kind of keeping keeping it moving is good. And like I said, don't over cure this. You know, it should be in for you know uh, you know twenty seconds per addition of a color, and then when you go to clear uh, coat it, uh, it'll go in for I think it's a minute thirty. Um, check your instructions. I'm pretty sure it's a minute 30 that it goes in to do a final cure because you will change or possibly could change the color of, of the Trusana or any other like cure that you use or the, the OptiGlaze itself if it stays in the uh, in the uh, that light cure unit too long. 
uh, it'll yellow it out. Uh, you know, especially a light cure. You know, a lot of people aren't using the proper light cure units for optic glaze and, and some things. And there's different wavelengths. And you know, definitely don't just haphazardly go about this stuff. Um, you know, definitely kind of keep uh, things strict as far as what's required by the company and the instructions. All right, this case is kind of cool. Again, just another way that you could use this material. So this is Dentavera. Dentavera is a material that Meyerson offers. It's a millable material. It has um, two tooth colors, kind of like bone colors. So they're not very aesthetic, but the material is nice, has nice rigidity. And this patient has had us do gold copings uh, uh, with a two degree taper to them. Oh, his teeth, he just, he did not trust bridges. Uh, this patient was just adamant about having something removable. And so what we came up with to be able to keep things small and dainty was doing those copings on there to get retention and then having did a little finger clasp here and having this lingual retention so he can remove this take it on and off the gold copings are going to protect his prepped teeth and uh but again this material is not attractive as far as aesthetically so what i did is i did, worked up veneers out of and printed them out of the trusana now the cool thing about this material is the composites and acrylics will bond to the dentavera nicely and those bond to the trisana nicely so this is a perfect way to create uh, get a bond between those two materials and create something nice for the patient and, and demand being demanding for a very specific type of appliance and so um lastly i want to leave you kind of with the financial part of this. Now it's going to sound like a sales pitch, but I'm a lab owner. And if I tell you, hey, uh, don't, you know, become your own tooth manufacturer, in your mind, you're going to go, okay, I can buy a card of teeth for, you know, five, uh, 20, uh, $75, whatever, you know, depending on the level of quality or whatever it is. Uh, I can spend this certain amount of money on that, or I have to spend the time and labor to digitally design and then print. Uh, my own and spend that time of labor and, and where does it make sense and so that's really why I broke this down not to be like a sales pitch because I mean Myerson hires me to teach not sale right I mean I, I could care less although you know don't don't tell Myerson that even though I just did but uh you know I, I'm literally here just to give them I think Myerson appreciates that they always like the fact that I'm a lab owner they never hired a person that works for the company to go out and speak on their behalf. They they have me, who's a guy in Virginia, say, hey, Christian, you use our material and you like it. Can you tell labs why you like it? And that's kind of what I do. And so this is part of it. So <clears throat> if you take into account an economy too, and you take an anterior or posterior set, right? Anterior, posterior, full denture of teeth. It's gonna be like five bucks, right? You're talking China, $2.50 a card teeth, right? That, that's gonna be, $5 times 144, 144 is a guesstimate on how many sets of teeth you could get out of a bottle of Trusana, right? And I think that's a pretty modest, so you can really count on that number, right? If you buy those five sets, that's gonna cost you 720 bucks, right? That is $70 more than the bottle of Trusana costs you. Now let's move to a mid-quality tooth. Right. Let's say 35 bucks. Right. Let's say it's, you know, 16, 17 dollars a set, you know, for this anterior and for the posterior, however you divide that. About around 35 dollars for the anterior posterior. 35 times that times that 144 that you would spend. That, now you're talking five thousand and forty dollars. Right. So now you can buy eight bottles of Trisana nine bottles of Trisana, something like that, right? And then you go to premium, $75, that's two sets. That's being pretty conservative. It could be a hundred bucks or even a little more, right? 70 times, uh, 75 times 144 sets, you're looking at nearly $11,000, all right? So definitely that way it makes sense. Now you got to add in some labor, but you know, it's always easier to set up a case digitally, uh, you know, there's advantages and we talked about some of the disadvantages so you can kind of take all of this information and kind of decide if this makes you know any sense uh in your lab and kind of put it to 
you know, kind of decide if you want to put it into play. So I want to end with this quote. So we all heard uh, this quote, Jack of all trades is a master of none. And I don't know uh, if you guys realize that that's not the full quote. You know, I always think of this as a lab. You know, I talked about how we wear a lot of hats, right? In a laboratory, we not only do we have to maybe work on the credit bridge side, maybe we have to do setups and we have to finish and we have to do night guards right? and then, oh, there's a repair came in and my technician's busy. I got to grab that repair or whatever it might be. But if the air compressor breaks, we got to go fix it ourselves you know, or, or something, right? Or we're just a jack of all trades. But, and so this is kind of defeating. It's kind of a saying that you're not really, you know, you're a jack of all trades and a master of nothing, you know, nothing, right? But the actual quote to this is, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. So I guess hold your head up, guys. I think we're we're doing okay. All right. Uh, so now I think we are at a point to where uh, we can uh, you guys can ask questions if there hasn't been some already typed in. And they'll read them off to me and I can answer those questions. So, so far, it seems that we don't have any questions because I guess everything you had to say was really, really informative. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was very informative. So thank you so much, Chris. Absolutely. And yeah, I would say, guys, if, um, you know, if you develop any questions, you can reach out to Meyerson. Uh, they can forward you on to me or Stephanie, who you saw, if it's a more technical question, um, um, or you can contact your Zon representative, and they might be able to facilitate that question getting answered uh, secondarily uh, at a later time. But if right now, if anybody has a question, you can type it into your, that question box, and that'll pop through, and we'll be able to read that. Okay, so we do have ones. One came in. This particular attendee wants to know if there are more than two printers that uh, Trusana is validated for. So right now, no. Um, those two printers, Asiga and Sprint Ray, are the ones that have been validated. Right now, we're working on some, some of the main brands uh, out there. Um, right now, Carbon, I think, is the next in line. It has been worked on. Uh, I know... Uh, you know, all the ones that you guys have heard, we're hoping to validate those. It, it's a, it's a, you know, if you do the validation right, it is a process. It takes time to do it right. And that's what we're making sure we do. And it's also very expensive, crazy expensive. I mean, we have companies that that's all they do. They don't work for us. We don't do it, you know, in our back, back room of Meyerson. This goes off to professionals and this is all they do is taken, they work for Ford and they work for Chevy and they work for all these different companies uh, to, to work on resins and validate. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's frustrating, but just be patient and, and we should get those out there in the mainstream uh, printers as soon as possible.